Today I'll be showing you the first 25 things you should do if you just picked up a brand new Apple Watch Ultra, SE, second generation, or even the latest Series 9. This is a complete guide to all the settings you need to adjust to really optimize your Apple Watch to your personal preference. Let's get started. Starting off with the very beginning, you know, once you set up your Apple Watch, it actually walks you through like the text size you like, but there actually is a cool on demand way where you can actually adjust the text size quickly. That is, you just go ahead and launch Control Center by tapping the power button, scroll down to edit, and make sure the text size one is added. Here you can actually rearrange it and adjust it and remove some of these if you don't like that. If you don't like some of these icons, you always have the freedom to arrange it to your own personal preference. But now, if you tap these two AA icons and use the digital crown, you can adjust the text size right here on the man at all times. So if you open up a third party app and it's kind of difficult to read, just go ahead and pop up control center and adjust it to your own personal preference. Now when it comes to notification privacy, if your Apple Watch supports always on display, you may not be a huge fan of how others could also view the complications and see your activity levels or other information you just don't want others to know. By launching the Apple Watch app on your iPhone and you scroll down to display and brightness, where it says always on, tap on here and then where, click on show complication data. You could turn it off entirely or select certain apps you wish to still be able to see the complication data right here on this display. So if we turn it off completely, now whenever you, we switch our app watches to always on display, the icons are gone. It doesn't show us data, it just shows us the apps where some of them are even censored. And if you wish to give yourself more privacy, if we go back and go into notifications and select where it says tap to show full notification. Now whenever you receive a message or any app notification, it will only show the app icon until you tap on it and it will actually reveal the entire body of the notification. Now by default, whenever you download an app, a new application on your iPhone, and it's also available on the Apple Watch, your iPhone will automatically set it so your Apple Watch will then download that app. If you don't like that, you can always disable this feature where it'll automatically download whatever app you download and install it on your iPhone on your Apple Watch. Back on our iPhone in the Apple Watch app, go into general and just disabled automatic install apps. Now it's no longer going to do that and it's not going to clutter up your Apple Watch app library with a bunch of random apps you don't find yourself using. But if there is an app that you want to actually add on the main section right here on the Apple Watch, just scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you'll find the option to install specific app you want to have available on your Apple Watch. Now if you find yourself using airplane mode a lot, if you go into general and go into airplane mode, here you can actually disable the mirror iPhone function. This way when airplane mode is enabled on your iPhone, it doesn't automatically put your Apple Watch into airplane mode itself. And you could disable it so you can have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth still remaining on. So if you have Bluetooth enabled, it'll still communicate with your iPhone, but will not have internet connectivity as well as cellular reception. Now still in the general tab, if you can scroll down, handoff mode may be disabled by default because it was on mine. By enabling handoff mode, whenever you're replying to a message on your Apple Watch, if you go on your iPhone and you launch App Switcher, you'll find that you could actually continue whatever app you were using on the Apple Watch on your iPhone without you manually having to open up that app individually. Handoff mode also works on Mac computers as well. Pretty nifty stuff. It's a free feature. I highly recommend utilizing it. Now by default, the wake screen will only stay on for 15 seconds. If you want to increase it to 75 seconds, it's really easy. Go into display and brightness and scroll down where it says wake duration. You can increase it up to 70 seconds, not 75, I'm sorry, 70 seconds. That's how long your Apple Watch will stay on until you decide on covering the display to turn it off. And while we're here, I know many people would like to actually be aware of this feature, but if you have an always on display Apple Watch, and you don't like that always on display, always being on, you want to squeeze as much battery as much as possible. Where it says always on, you can always disable it from here. Now if you work at a place or you find yourself using an app all the time and you don't want it to go away until you manually tap on the digital crown to close the app, you can actually program your app watch to always leave that app running. To do so, just go into your settings, go into general, and where it says return to, return to clock, select the app you like to have this capability. So in my case, I'm going to use the activity app and here you want to select custom and you want to select after an hour. That's the longest you can have it running in the background. Now, whenever you 
put your wrist down, it's not going to re automatically return you back to the clock watch phase. So actually continue staying on because when we hit never and we do the exact same thing, we go back to our watch phase. Now, your Apple Watch does have nightstand mode. If you go in general, enable nightstand mode, whenever you dock your Apple Watch, it will actually display the time. But not only that, the little lightning bolt right here as a pro tip, you could tap on it to actually see the exact percentage of your current Apple Watch. Then if you were unaware, the lock screen widget page, you could select the battery widget and this will show you the battery life percentage of your Apple Watch. But it only prioritize the device that's currently active, but if we would put this Apple Watch on a charging dock, it will display the Apple Watch first. Now if you also suffer the screenshot effect whenever you tap on the power button and digital crown, this will take a screenshot. If it, does, if it gets to the point where this becomes annoying, go into general and just disable screenshot from here. Now these accidents will no longer be a thing. Hey, do you like grandfather clocks? Well, you, I'll be happy to inform you there is a similar grandfather clock experience you can enable on your Apple Watch. By going in the clock section, and if you enable chimes, now every time on the hour, we notify you lightly that an hour has gone by. This is a great tool to have on if you're like me who always lose track of time. This way you're always notified whenever one hour or two hour has gone by. You may also change the sound effects to bird as a bell, but if you have your Apple Watch on silent, it's just going to give you a small vibration, heptic feedback onto your wrist. Now, if you find the button speed to be really quick or slow, you can always adjust it to your own personal preference by just going into accessibility, scroll down to button click speed, and here you can select slow or slowest. And if you use Apple Pay, you know you're required to have a lock code on your Apple Watch. And there's times where I would put on an Apple Watch and I would forget to unlock my Apple Watch. So all my notification, my fitness track data and stuff like that, it's gone until I unlock my Apple Watch. So I'm more likely to actually unlock my iPhone than my watch. But you can have your Apple Watch be unlocked from your iPhone. By just going into passcode and security right here, so long as the password is enabled in the passcode section, enabled unlock with iPhone and now this will no longer happen. As soon as you unlock your iPhone, it will automatically unlock your Apple Watch. And if you have a Mac computer that doesn't have Touch ID, but you like to have quicker access to your laptop without entering the passcode, by going into System Preferences and the System Settings, and just go ahead and scroll into your Password and Security, uh, click on your Password section, enable the Apple Watch you like to have the capability to automatically unlock your Mac computer. Now when viewing your list of apps, you may find it easier in the grid view or list view. If you scroll all the way to the very bottom, you could select between the different modes right here. And obviously long hold will allow you to delete some of these apps as well, rearrange them. But yeah, you should get the picture from here. Cover to mute is also a setting that's disabled by default. Whenever you receive a phone call or a notification pops up, if you quickly cover your Apple Watch and continue holding it, it will automatically put your device into silent mode. To make sure you have this setting enabled, go into sound and heptics and scroll down to where it says cover to mute and enable this. And if you're experiencing difficulties locating your iPhone, by launching control center and tapping the iPhone icon right here, it will actually give you hip feedback when you're getting closer or further away from your iPhone and will also give you an arrow indicator. And if you're on an iPhone, if you, if you go in your iPhone settings and go into the control center section and scroll all the way down to until you see this green Apple Watch icon, add this and this will give you your iPhone find my capability for your Apple Watch. Now safety features are turned off by default. In the emergency SOS section, on top here you can enable where you long hold will toggle SOS or fall detection as well as crash detection. And on the very bottom, you can enter your contact, you can enter emergency contact information. So your Apple Watch will also get a hold of them in case of an emergency. And if you wish to start a 20 second timer automatically whenever you're watching your hands, to enable this, go back out of this section and just scroll down to where you see hand watching. And here, just go ahead and enable that. Then if you find yourself always missing notifications because you can't feel the heptic feedback, you can actually increase the heptic feedback strength by going into sound and heptics and where it says prime it, heptic feedback, enable this, check mark it. And now you'll find that the heptic feedback is much more aggressive. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes Apple Maps can be annoying whenever you're using CarPlay because your Apple Watch will vibrate you all the time. If you wish to disable this feature back in the Apple Watch app section, scroll down to where you find maps and go ahead and disable drive when using CarPlay. You can also disable the other ones if you like to. And then lastly, if you have an Apple Watch Ultra, 
program the action buttons to do other things. You have full customizability right here, and you can also program it to unlock your car as well, so that you can utilize Siri shortcuts. If you'd like me to make a full in-depth detailed video on how to create these, comment down below and let me know if that would be something you guys will be interested in. And just like that, you fully optimize your Apple Watch to your personal settings. Hey, if you'd like to watch more, maybe you're curious to know how your Apple Watch performs against other older Apple Watch models, check out this video over here where I do the whole complete battery drain test to see which Apple Watch truly does last over a whole day. Thanks so much for watching.